Welcome to the Lakers Nation news feed. My name is Trevor Lane. You can find me on Twitter at Trevor underscore Lane. Today's show is brought to you by DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, use the promo code CLNS, and you can play free fantasy basketball to win your share of up to $10,000 in prizes. Well, the world of the Los Angeles Lakers is always interesting. 365 days a year, there is something going on. And most of the time, it's something fairly dramatic. And that's what we're seeing right now because some reports have come out about Jordan Clarkson and Julius Randle potentially being on the move and an interesting meeting that the team had to discuss some things going on, not only on the court, but also in the front office. So I brought in Sam Vecini of The Athletic and the Game Theory Podcast. Awesome guy, does a fantastic job breaking down all of the, this stuff. Always great to to follow him. Sam, thanks so much for coming on and helping me deal with all of this insanity. Yeah, it's a weird Lakers day, it seems like. So I'm happy to come on and kind of delve into the just weirdness that continues to pop up with this team. It is. It's, it's like it's the Lakers. So you, you kind of understand. You almost expect it, but it still catches you off guard when stuff like this happens. I and mean, I guess the, the first thing for us to talk about is that Bill Orm of the, the Southern California News Group said that the Lakers held a, a meeting, a team meeting, and the players aired grievances about what's happening on the court. And according to Brandon Ingram said this, the business of the organization. It's that second part that really got me, that they're talking about the business of the organization. What's going on there? Well, I think that whenever you have as unsettled a situation as the Los Angeles Lakers roster seems to be, that the players can get unsettled themselves. And I think that part of this has to do with the fact that Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka aren't really throwing water on the idea of the Lakers... I guess having this space for two max players, right? And right now they only have one or one spot for a max player to be specific. And whenever that's the case, you have to assume the trades are going to come along and they haven't done anything. And in fact, it seems like they are leaking given the Tanya Ganguly of the uh, Los Angeles times report that they would love to trade Julius Randall and Jordan Clarkson if they could. So, Whenever that happens, it creates unsettled rosters. It creates for a situation where there are issues with players feeling like they aren't valued and that they are in some way inadequate with what the roster or what the organization wants from them. And I don't blame them for feeling that way. It it seems like there are unwanted players from the Lakers front office on this roster right now. And uh, that's kind of a messed up deal to me. Yeah, I mean, I think that part of this could be that you've got players who were not brought in by this regime, right? I mean, they, you've got the holdovers from the Cupjack and, and Bus era, and Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka just don't seem all that attached to them. I mean, they didn't didn't bat an eyelash when they traded away D'Angelo Russell and got him out the door, and now we're hearing these rumors about Clarkson and Randall, Randall two of the other big draft picks of the previous regime. So it, it seems like the Lakers are are kind of moving forward and trying to distance them, themselves from that era. But it's a, it's a little bit strange to see that the team isn't giving Julius Randle very many minutes. And now we're hearing him pop up in trade rumors. I mean, isn't this, isn't that kind of negating his value or at least diminishing his value on the trade market? Yeah. And to be honest, it's just kind of stringing him along too in a way that has to make him feel uncomfortable and his representation have to feel uncomfortable. Obviously they are in a contract year and it is never practical or good for an organization to not take care of their own whenever a player is playing well. And I feel like that's what's happening with Julius Randle right now. Uh, He has very clearly taken a leap on both the offensive and defensive ends. He has gotten into the best shape of his life. He has, uh, you know, from, the outside point of view done everything he can to improve his own game. And the Lakers are considerably better when he steps onto the floor, uh, despite him playing in a multitude of different lineups. So when I look at this, if I'm Julius Randall, I think I kind of have a right to be pretty pissed about what's happening. And I don't really understand what the goal is in terms of messing with him and messing with his future contract. And, you know, uh, not playing your best players and creating a sense that you don't always have to 
do that within an organization because that that's how players start to get a little bit frustrated. They see what's happening on the floor and start to understand that this is a uh, this is not a meritocracy. And I think that uh, the best teams are run as a meritocracy, as we've seen, for instance, with Golden State, they've started to play Jordan Bell more and more and more, despite the fact that they have. Uh, veterans on that roster who have been there for a long time and who understand the scheme and who, you know, uh, would have more cachet in that locker room, so to speak. So I think that it's very annoying uh, if I was Julius Randle that I have continued to not get the minutes that I feel I rightly deserve. Yeah, I mean, it, you have to imagine that Randall isn't too thrilled. He he literally has millions of dollars on the line here because his new his right. next contract is at, at stake. He got himself into great shape, did what he what the organization asked him to do, and now he's he's not getting those those minutes out there. And Luke Walton had some comments actually this morning, and Shahan Ahmed of NBCLA uh, reported what Walton's comments were about Randall's playing time, and he essentially said that that it's not about matchups or, or anything like that. He said some nights he doesn't play play big minutes because other guys are simply rolling. Those guys are playing better. And as you just said, that's that's a meritocracy. If those guys are playing well and Randall's not not playing, then that's that's fine, right? But then he also said some nights it's because it's up to the standard that he's set for himself, meaning Julius isn't playing up to the level that the Lakers expect him to play. So they're using those minutes as a as a carrot trying to get him to play better. And, I'm a little bit confused by that one. I mean, it seems like he's been playing pretty darn well whenever he's out there on the floor. Statistically, he's been one of their best players. So it feels like this this whole situation is is getting worse rather than than getting better. Do you think that's that's fair? Yeah, I mean, I think it's starting to come to a head, you know, and we'll see what ends up happening whenever uh, the trade deadline comes along, whenever the new year rolls over and they start to have substantive trade discussions about Julius Randle. I think it's very clear that, uh, you know, his time in Los Angeles is up. If I was him, I probably would not want to continue on with this organization, just given uh, the improvements and the effort he's made to quell some of their fears about him. But you know, maybe maybe he wants to play for the Lakers. Maybe he enjoys the, uh, you know, the purple and gold and really wants to make it work here. I don't know. I can't speak for him. But if I was him, just with the way that I think about things, I would be very, uh, very frustrated that they have told me to do these things and I have gone about doing them, improving to the best of my abilities. And the organization is essentially telling me that I am just not good enough for what they want or I'm not the right fit for what they want. Well, you know what? That's that's not the first time that we've that we've heard this. I actually spoke to Ivica Zubats about a month ago and he mentioned that the Lakers told him last summer that they needed him to anticipate playing a big role this season, that he was going to be their backup center and to make sure that he he was talking about possibly going home for the summer. And they dissuaded him from doing that, said, we want you to stay here and continue working out. And so that way you're ready to play this season. And instead, he's playing most of his games for the South Bay Lakers and has seen extremely limited playing time for the Lakers. And so he's not thrilled about that whole situation. He didn't go home to see family and stayed in L.A. to work out because he was being promised a huge role. And then the Lakers went out and brought in Andrew Bogut to kind of take that role from him. So, Well, you know what part of this is for me, too? Like... If I'm the Lakers and I'm Magic Johnson and I've probably watched the Lakers a decent amount, just given the fact that, you know, I'm Magic Johnson. I live in Los Angeles. I, uh, you know, I care about this organization. I'm sure he's watched a decent amount of Lakers games over the course of the last couple of years, but I don't think he has an intimate knowledge of these players. I don't think he has an intimate knowledge of this player base coming into the year, at least. So I think he wanted everyone to be around this summer and whenever you're hiring a guy that doesn't have that intimate knowledge, it can result in unrealistic expectations. And I think that you're seeing that with the way that the Lakers are kind of dragging some guys around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Um, with, with Randall though, it's a bit weird because it feels like he's lived up to those expectations, but I guess we're going to have to see how this whole situation plays out. I mean, they've, they shifted him into a different position. I don't know that he feels like, like a backup center is his his long term role in the NBA. I'm sure he sees himself as a starter. Maybe he sees himself as a power forward. Maybe a center. We're not really sure. Yeah. But, but still, 
it just feels like he's been one of their their better players statistically. So you would think that he should be be out there playing, but that's just not the path the Lakers have taken here. So it's going to be interesting to see as things get closer to the trade deadline because this was a, a point I made on on your show. I think things over the next few weeks are going to get worse rather than get better if if all these rumors and all the things happening within the organization, if that's something that's being talked about at a, a team meeting, if they're concerned about who's going to be moved and how the Lakers are going to free up cap space to chase LeBron and, and all that kind of stuff, well, it's going to get worse over the next few weeks because the intensity of the trade rumors is only going to pick up. Yeah, and, and you know what? Like, at the end of the day, if they are able to woo LeBron – everything's going to fix itself, right? Yep. You look at the way the Cavs were run. Like there, there were literal like hashtag season of, huh? Whenever the year before Lebr- or, uh, LeBron got back there, just because it was a total mess. They had no idea of what exactly they wanted to do outside of create cap space for LeBron and try and develop their young players. I think that we're seeing that the Lakers want to try and develop the young players. They see as the future of their organization, particularly Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma. But beyond that, they don't really have a general sense of how they want to go about creating the cap space that they want to become contenders in the LeBron race. Uh, If LeBron signs, everything's forgiven. And this will all work out just like it did in Cleveland, I'm sure. They'll probably go out and get a second star like Cleveland did with Kevin Love, in their case, a third star. But it'll be fine. The problem arises if they don't sign LeBron. Mm -hmm. The problem arises if they end up with like Paul George and DeMarcus Cousins as their two guys. Those are two guys where I think you want a pretty stable culture in place already before they come in and, you know, try and establish their own culture, so to speak. Like we've already seen that with Cousins, particularly uh, in Sacramento, where he was part of a team that was tasked with establishing a culture that it didn't necessarily work out all that well for the Kings. The Lakers aren't really establishing a culture here that is positive, in my opinion. And maybe I'm not enough on the inside of the organization to see everything. But if we're having players only meetings about the business of the organization, that does not seem like a positive for the direction of the culture of the organization going forward. No, agreed. And as as we've said, this the fact that they had a players only meeting isn't all that bad on the on the surface because i mean they, the team's been losing so they should right. meet and try to try to figure everything out try to figure out what's going on but the fact that they're talking about the business of the organization that they're talking about who's going to be traded and who's going to be be staying and and all that that stuff is starting to bother them that's off the court those are other outside issues i, I mean we're talking about off court issues and we're not even bringing up LeVar Ball or him being a distraction or, or anything like that, which seems amazing because that was all the talk heading into the season. So you've got or like uh, three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so you've got like all of these, all these other distractions that are starting to get to these young players and we're seeing the results on the floor. They're losing games that are very, very winnable. And it's uh, it's definitely a concern right now. I don't know that they end up making a move at the trade deadline, but maybe this forces their hand. The fact that there is this, you know, this sort of unsettled feeling, maybe they figure out that they they have to make a move now so that the everything just gets settled and the team knows exactly where they're at. I don't know that that's the best bargaining position to be in, but in terms of the rest of the season, maybe the best outcome is that they make a move. Yeah, I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, at this stage, it does seem like, you know, just – getting rid of you know the problems that the organization has with Julius Randle and Jordan Clarkson might make the most sense but you also need to capitalize the most you can on their asset value I, I honestly don't know what to tell you it's a funky deal I, I I just it's a tightrope that they have to walk from here on out and I just wonder if this being the first time that Magic Johnson and Rob Palinka have had to walk this tightrope if they're ready for exactly what they're going to have to do. I mean, Rob Polink has been an agent. He's seen these negotiations firsthand, but he's never done them from this side of the table. I, I just don't know how it's all going to work out at the end. I guess we're, we're going to find out over the next few months, but, but man, never a dull day in the, in the, uh, the Lakers nope. organization, huh? <laughs> never fails, man. This organization always comes around and just tries to find their way to get in the news, especially with magic Johnson being general manager. Now, uh, it's been really fun to track, but I'm sure it hasn't been fun to play, uh, for the Lakers at this stage. You know, uh, I'm lucky that I get to live in Hollywood and see it firsthand. 
It's it's always interesting. I mean, look, it was a sort of a casual Friday, right? There didn't seem to be all that much going on, and then boom, suddenly this this news comes out, and next thing we know, the Lakers are are would love to trade <laughs> Randall, love to trade Clarkson. They're having players only meetings, and and all these things are happening. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's just that's covering the Los Angeles Lakers. So so there you go. Sam, thanks so much for, for joining us here to help us make sense of, of all of this. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure we're going to have to have you on again soon to break down whatever other craziness pops up. Yep. Happy to come on, Trevor. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. So that was Sam Vicini of The Athletic and The Game Theory Podcast. Always great stuff from him. Make sure you guys go to iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe to the Lakers Nation news feed. We cover all the breaking news for the Los Angeles Lakers. And, of course, go to LakersNation.com for all the latest on this story and every other Lakers story that pops up. My name is Trevor Lane, and this has been the Lakers Nation News Feed. See ya.